Hi everyone, welcome to Synergy Flavors Trendcast episode 4. I'm Alex Masumoto, a marketing associate at Synergy Flavors in the US. And in this episode, we're going to discuss the COVID-19 outbreak. And uh, with the contribution of colleagues around the world, we'll be looking at the uh, shifts in the consumer behavior and trends in the market to predict how the pandemic is going to impact on food and beverage moving forward. Today, I'm joined by Casey, Natalie, Vicky, and, and Talita, who are spread across our locations, uh, working from home, and we'll, we'll be providing their insights to what's happening in their regions. So why don't we start uh, with a short introduction? Uh, should we start with you, Casey? Great. Hi, guys. My name is Casey Cooter. I'm a marketing communication specialist, also out of our U.S. location. Hi, I'm Natalie Drake, and I'm a category manager for bakery and dairy at Synergy Flavors uh, for the U.K. and Europe. Hi, I'm Vicky Berry. I'm business development manager for the U.K. and Europe. Hi, I'm Talita Lincoln, commercial manager for Brazil. Awesome. Thank you all for joining again. Um, I would like to start today's trendcast with uh, a brief comparison on some of the behaviors that have been drawing attention in our society as a whole. And um, of course, with the pandemic, we understand that those behaviors are suffering uh, uh, more significant impacts than ever before. Concepts of community, connectivity, and interaction are becoming more and more important. Mintel has worked in a very interesting report that highlights shifts in, in some of these attitudes and behaviors. Uh, and it's a comparison called then versus now. So then means uh, before the pandemic and now means uh, our current situation, but also looking um, at the future post COVID-19. Um, so starting with uh, the single and working versus mandated isolation. Uh, we know that our society is becoming increasingly focused on independence enabling many consumers to achieve their career, personal goals, but people are less likely to live near or with a partner, uh, a family, or a friend. Experiences are greatly valued among young people, where traveling and personal goals become a higher priority coming uh, if compared to starting a family, as an example. Um, if we think about financial status in the future, you know, it also plays a huge part in encouraging isolation as consumers move uh, they're moving more to find better opportunities um, or refrain from participating in social activities to cut costs. The second topic is interaction. So um, then was the lacking opportunities to interact and now it's interaction at a premium. Um, an aging population is a global occurrence and as consumers enjoy a longer life plan, lifespan, um, this is also resulting in an increasing number of single households and high isolation rates. Consumers are also enjoying a larger number of options when it comes to single activities, um, leading to the reduced need for physical interactions with others. Actively seeking communities, um, both offline and online, is an occurrence that consumers are looking to connect with. But now interaction at a premium. The surging volunteers signing up to help in their community has highlighted that there is a recognition of the need for support of those more vulnerable. Single activities are restricted to, to the home, but communities encourage, um, and that be from YouTube workouts to breakfast raves. Um, there's, there's never been a time when online communities can provide so much to support to so many, uh, from fundraising to sharing lockdown advice, um, uh, virtual happy hour and more. Two other topics that Mintel also talks about in their COVID report is the consumer shift in terms of technological convenience and social media. During the pandemic, the way we view and participate in our communities has fundamentally changed with a greater need to stay connected while being physically parted, despite different activities allowing for independence or single activities as Alex just talked about. From universities quickly pivoting to what offering 100% online courses, local gyms offering online group fitness classes, and major companies throughout the world offering samples or direct-to-consumer shipments, brands across industries have answered the call to support online connections. In doing so, some have learned rather quickly to tread with sensitivity and care, and not to use this support as a platform to overtly sell or promote themselves, as they may be perceived as taking advantage of a crisis that has impacted so many on a global scale. Many social media platforms have taken action during COVID-19, such as Facebook actively removing what they've dubbed as false stories and going as far as the notifying users that they may have crossed paths with this falsely spread information. We've also seen a surge in new social platforms taking hold of the social market share, such as TikTok or House Party, 
both of which focus on growing online community and entertainment while stay at home orders remain in effect. In addition to the social media surge, online shopping has become a necessity for many if it wasn't already. As a result, brands are adopting a different tone in customer service interactions. Because now they cannot encourage people to leave their homes to engage with their brands, they are now looking to make their remote interactions as human as possible. With supply chains stretched and unemployment rates spiking, we've seen a move back to basics in terms of what consumers are shopping for as well, limiting their purchases to what they deem as necessities over luxuries. According to Mattel, for example, alcohol sales for at-home consumption have boomed, whereas makeup sales have seen a sharp decline. Thanks, Casey. Um, I think that summarized uh, well how uh, we see consumer behavior uh, shifting during the pandemic. And in the next topics, we'll touch on the impact that the pandemic has had on food, beverage, and nutrition specifically. Vicky, we have been following alcoholic beverages very close, and it's safe to say that this category has suffered one of the biggest impacts when it comes to shifts in the consumer behaviors in the last few years. How do you see the pandemic impacting some of the trends like low to no alcohol products and health wellness in the alcoholic beverage category? Thanks, Alex. Um, it's a really interesting area looking at the alcoholic category in the low and no alcohol space. And I think during quarantine, we have globally seen the juxtaposition of those increasing their intake at home, whilst others kind of making that choice and taking a view to lower their alcohol intake alongside a healthy or more balanced approach to food and drink. Um, I think categories like hard seltzers with their lower ABV content are poised to work really, really well for, you know, the more mindful consumer. Um, we've also seen interest in premium alcoholic beverages with consumers making the choice to drink less, but they're drinking better when they do drink. I think people have had a lot of fun during this time as well. And we've seen kind of people become more experimental and actually bring in the cocktail culture into their own houses. So we've seen consumers creating their own tiki bars and people developing their skills as mixologists. So we've seen this wave of kind of innovation from consumers as well. So it'd be interesting to see how brands adopt that wave of innovation um, and take learnings from the consumers. We've seen bartenders from around the globe actually sharing their creations at home. There was a famous bartender in the US who actually helped consumers create cocktails at home based on what people had in their fridges and cups via Twitter. People were posting what they actually had in their fridge and saying, what can I create from this? So a really nice approach um, during this time. Conversely to cocktails, though, on the non-alcoholic side, we've seen adults experimenting with soft drinks. Essentially, we're seeing soft drinks grow up from cocktails and mocktails through to RTDTs and botanical drinks, we're seeing this wave of innovation in soft drinks category globally. I think this has largely been driven through millennials, but really seeing Gen Z furthering the interest for more interesting soft drinks. The low and no category was already recording strong growth in 2019, and I think with the current situation through 2020 and 2021, as consumers are going to want more choice in this category, this will continue to grow. We've seen brands blending botanicals and flavours to offer consumers comparable taste complexity as consumers really are demanding a better tasting low or no alcoholic product. We anticipate the economic effects of COVID-19 will further drive this category as low and no drinks are typically cheaper than their alcoholic equivalents. Alongside this as well, the tonics market is poised to do particularly well as it allows the consumers that flexibility to kind of mix their drink with either an alcoholic spirit or a non-alcoholic distilled spirit. Thanks, Vicky. This is uh, really insightful. Um, we've mentioned before about a trend they're calling back to basics. And, you know, we're definitely monitoring this trend before uh, the pandemic, but now it seems that things have accelerated, uh, you know, with, with the whole situation. So, Talita, could you give us your perspective on on the Brazilian consumers and, and how the back to basics is influencing um, our industry? Yes, Alex, for sure. So, first of all, um, I think we need to understand that uh, the government continued to work containing the pandemic and uh, the economic effects begin to be felt. Uh, uncertainty remains the main sentiment of Brazilians and most are facing declining incomes in recent weeks. There are more than 13 million unemployed in Brazil and 7 in 10 Brazilians feel like the situation requires a different uh, financial plan. Because of that, consumers have been spending across many categories and buying only essential products. So that's why we are talking about back to basics. Many brands have reduced their portfolio to focus only on best-selling items. Uh, the movement in wholesales increased 
once consumers are looking uh, looking large quantities and discounts. The search for more accessible products generate an increase in private label products, which are cheaper than traditional brands. Looking for a way to combat anxiety and worry, consumers are purchasing more indulgent and nostalgic products, trying to bring back family memory. In addition to that, the search for local products increased a lot. This is a way for consumers to support uh, local producers. So uh, we, when we take a look in all this data, the companies need to rethink how to connect with this new consumer. Thanks, Talita. So I think um, the local um, sourcing is really interesting area and it's something we're definitely seeing across Europe as well. Um, so obviously a lot of consumers have been forced to stay within their communities throughout the pandemic. And this has really highlighted um, the amount of food that's actually being imported within their, their regions. Um, and this is bringing about a newfound concern about sustainability and local sourcing um, has, has led many consumers to switch to local suppliers and ingredients. Um, interesting, this is particularly prevalent in Italy where 71% uh, of consumers there now say that they are buying local where possible. So the next topic we wanted to cover is immunity. Um, so at the moment, consumers are really taking an interest in their immunity and how improving their diet might help to boost their immune system and protect protect them from COVID-19. Interestingly, there has been limited and conflicting evidence to suggest that specific foods can help to boost immunity. Um, and a lot of nutritionists are now saying um, that a more balanced diet is the best approach. So this is really highlighting how we might start to see, see a more holistic approach to health. Um, interestingly, gut health is one area where we're seeing increasing links being made with holistic health and immunity. Um, this is really evident in the fact that sales of kefir products, which are known for uh, their gut health benefits, um, the, the sales of those products jumped by almost 50% in the four weeks before lockdown started in the UK. Uh, we also saw the same increase in demand for gut health promoting products in China when the pandemic first started. In addition to this, we are also seeing a growing interest globally in vitamin and mineral supplementation. So that's either through capsules or food and drink fortification as well. So our colleagues in Thailand have also mentioned that in Asia, there's been an increase in consumption of foods that are perceived to be healthier by consumers there. So this is really basic healthy foods, so things like eggs, dairy and other fresh foods. And they've also seen a drop in purchasing of generally unhealthy foods, so things like snacks and alcoholic drinks. Um, this is likely linked to consumers wanting to boost their immunity through a more healthy and balanced diet. Um, in Italy as well, we're also starting to see consumers paying more attention to their holistic health. Um, in a recent Italian survey um, with consumers, they rated lack of exercise, putting on weight and eating unhealthily as their top concerns throughout the pandemic. Um, and it's really forced Italian consumers to put health and nutrition at the forefront of their minds. Um, and this is something we expect to see grow further um, in the coming months, as even as restrictions ease. So looking ahead to the future, we're predicting that consumers' interest in immunity boosting foods and foods for holistic health will continue to grow, um, especially as restrictions start to ease and we become more exposed to the outside world as well. So to tap into this trend, manufacturers should be now thinking about how they can offer functional benefits, not just for nutritional purposes, but also considering mood, sleep and all around well-being. Thanks for that great overview on immunity, Natalie. We're seeing a similar trend in the U.S. with an increase of product launches containing antioxidants or vitamin C across food and beverage categories as health and wellness continues to be top of mind for consumers. Natalie, you, you've also mentioned a return or exploration of at-home kitchens. Can you elaborate a little bit on that for us? Yeah, thanks, Casey. So definitely as um, social distancing rules um, as they are at the moment, we're seeing uh, restaurant capacity um, being decreased. Um, and this is something that's gonna continue for a significant amount of time. Um, so also consumers are quite focused on saving money um, and that's really at the forefront of their minds. Um, so spending more time at home has really forced consumers and brands alike to think more creatively about how they can still have a great food and drink experience from the comfort of their home. 
we've seen plenty of meal kits and online cookery courses that have really helped consumers create the restaurant experience from the comfort of their home. Um, Wagamama's, for example, launched their Walk From Home series, which is a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching consumers how to make the perfect katsu curry, yakisoba, pad thai or anything else on Wagamama's menu. As we, so as we move out of restrictions, it's likely that this newfound love of cooking will continue to grow, especially with consumers who have less money to spend on meals out or might even be nervous about visiting restaurants to start with. Um, so throughout Asia and in Thailand in particular, there's been a really significant drop in dine-in spending, um, obviously with the lockdown restrictions in, in place. Um, and we're also seeing consumers now saying that they're avoiding street food stalls and markets as they're becoming much more aware of hygiene and cleanliness. Um, and obviously pairing that with concerns about income, um, we're likely to see consumer spending shift away from dining out to um, grocery spends in Asia as well. We've also seen a huge rise in home baking throughout the pandemic. Um, so beginners and professionals alike are taking to Instagram to share their really amazing photos of sour, sourdough bread, cakes and cookies. Um, so without a doubt, though, it's banana bread that's been the star of the show as consumers make the most of their sad looking fruit bowl and really want kind of highlighting the, the food wastage um, concern that consumers have as well. So as Vicky mentioned earlier, we have also seen a wave of cocktail culture sweeping across the nation as many consumers are missing their Friday night martini and looking to recreate the same experience in their living rooms. One thing that consumers will be taking out this strange time is a newfound skill in the kitchen. Um, so whether that's mastering bread baking, um, learning how to make espresso martinis or becoming a master at sushi rolling, it's clear that consumers will want to continue to develop these skills even as restrictions ease. So in the coming months, I'm sure we'll start to see more meal kits, baking mixes being launched to really enhance the at home cooking experience. Anything that kind of taps into that newfound love of cooking, baking, cocktail making is sure to be a hit with today's consumers. Thanks, Natalie. Um, of course, there's a lot to cover on this topic at the moment, but um, I wanted to highlight the Synergy Flavors has been following this situation very closely to provide you the most updated, but at the same time, um, accurate information on how the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting food, beverage, and nutrition. Um, just a quick reminder that you can access the latest Trendcast episodes at our YouTube and Spotify channels. Um, in the episode two, we covered the trending flavors for sparse nutrition. Um, and in the episode three, we talked more about um, all things hard seltzers. So if you are interested to know more about those and other trends, or if you have any questions regarding the topics that we presented in this trendcast today, please get in touch with us through our website, synergytaste.com, or you can also find us uh, across social media platforms. So um, I would like to thank Casey, Natalie, Vicky, and Talita for uh, joining me today. And I would like to thank you for listening to Synergy Flavors Trendcast. See you next time.